Welcome in, along with Eric Eager, I'm Steve Palazzolo, today bringing you the PFF College Top 25 after six weeks of college football action. Of course, it's all brought to you by Eckridge, the official smoked sausage of the college football playoff. And look, we have a game list for you guys. If you're going to be at these games, you can enroll in the Eckridge Million Dollar Challenge. Go to EckridgeFootball.com, check out this list of games. You can sign up by the final date that's listed right there. And of course, the national championship is open to everybody. So go get to EckridgeFootball.com right now to sign up. All right, Eric, we've got our top 25. We took last week off to let it breathe just a little bit. Just a quick reminder on how we do it. We're just listing the best teams. It's not completely resume driven. This team beat that team, therefore they must be higher. It's based off of performance, PFF grades. What else goes into our entire list here? Yeah, it's basically PFF grades, who you play, what you were expected to do against that team, and then how you perform. So oftentimes, if you have a big win against a rated team, for example, like Texas this week, you'll rise a bunch of spots in our ratings. Oftentimes, though, like two weeks ago when Ohio State beat Penn State, it wasn't quite as big of a rise because the grades would suggest that Penn State outplayed Ohio State. So it's basically built off of our PFF grades, which are performance-driven, and then a little bit of math that kind of you know, shuffles the deck here. And we've had pretty good success when a team, you know, when we say that they're pretty good, eventually, don't forget, it's a long season, yep. that eventually it comes true. So let's go through our top 25, starting with 21 through 25. I think a couple notable teams here. You've got Kentucky, a team that has been one of the biggest surprise teams in the entire country right now. Florida is there at 21, despite their, not despite their little role, but a lot of people might have them higher because, you know, they've only got one loss and they're, you know, they've won a few games right now. So what stands out in this group for you? Yeah, I, th I think Florida is one of those teams, right? We had them rated a little bit lower than most and it's because their quarterback situation is a little bit inconsistent. And even though they've risen up, the, a combination of the teams they've played along the way and then their continued question marks, I think, offensively, we have them highly rated, but not as highly as some. That's what I feel about Kentucky as well. Yep. Inconsistent play from Terry Wilson at quarterback. Their star is only a running back. It's Benny Snell. You know, how far can running backs really ca carry you? Yep. But their defense has been great. Their star on defense is Josh Allen, a guy that we've featured all over this channel the past week. So Kentucky, I think they're still getting enough love for us uh, from us at this point. Let's go to the next group, 16 through 20. That's where we see Iowa in there. We see Fresno State in there. Anything else that stands out in this group? Michigan in there as well? Yeah, for me, it's Iowa, right? So early in the season, they had a tough time scoring against Iowa State. They've had, you know, just difficulties offensively with Nate Stanley. And then now, you know, against Minnesota, their offense sort of came alive. I think they're a team that, you know, maybe because of their, their loss to Wisconsin, probably won't be in that conversation for like the Big Ten title, but uh, you know, I think they're a team to be reckoned with as we move forward here. Dangerous team in Iowa. Also love Anthony Nelson, edge defender, big monster, six foot seven, played well for three straight years now for the Hawkeyes. I want to get into the top 15 though, 11 through 15. This is where Texas lands right now. Is Texas back? Well, I mean, look, 15 in our, rank, uh, in our rankings from where they started. Yes. That is putting them back. They're back on the map, and I think they've got a chance to move up if they continue to play well. Yeah, I think this is going to be the difference between a math-based system and any other base system is Texas is not anywhere near the top 25 when the season starts, but you beat a team like TCU, you beat a team like Oklahoma. Their defense shows, shows some signs there, you know, crumbling at the end, uh, but they ended up getting a win, right? So they're an impressive team. Uh, another team that I like here is NC State. They've been a team that our model has liked above you know, for example, you know, the, the spread for the last like few games, uh, they almost melted down against Boston College, but ended up getting a win there. So we like them moving forward. Uh, Ryan Finley has been really impressive so far. He has, he has been, and their, their schedule hasn't been great. So that's why a team like NC State, not that high. But again, they've got a chance with that ACC schedule yeah. uh, to move up in the coming weeks. All right, man, I think I finally got it figured out. I'm gonna throw the ball through the kitchen window, off the doghouse, rocketing up and off the bird feeder all the way through the target. I don't know, man, that's a really tough angle. I think you gotta ditch the bird feeder. How long that take you? A couple hours. You know you could have just gone off the porch column? That's a good looking plate of food. The Eckridge Million Dollar Challenge is back. Enter at EckridgeFootball.com for your chance to win. What do you think? <laughs> Seriously, dude? Let's get into the top 10 now. This is where some of the discussion can start. Six through 10 is loaded with Big Ten teams, Wisconsin, Penn State, 
are right there. Oklahoma, Central Florida, and then with Washington at number 10. What stands out in this grouping for you? Yeah, I think obviously uh, UCF being in there, it's a, a great story, I think, but they're, they're pro this is probably their ceiling, right? And, and unless they, you know, unless they go, you know, to a bowl game and beat a team that's more highly rated than them, this is probably where they're going to end up. I think those three Big Ten teams, you know, obviously, like two of them are going to end up in the Big Ten title game if, if things stay the way they are. Penn State obviously lost the game against Ohio State, but played better. So it's a, it's a shame here that they're, you know, they're going to be probably stuck at that ceiling as well. Wisconsin, of course, playing Michigan this week. I think that's going to be very telling, especially yeah. where uh, we're always a little bit higher on Wisconsin based off our history of numbers and Alex Hornibrook being a little bit better than I think people expect. And uh, Penn State's an interesting one here for me because, like you said, they pretty much outplayed Ohio State, and it's really not a big difference between Ohio State, who's at number five. Let's get into the top five. Ohio State at number five, Wisconsin six, and Penn State seven. There's really not a big difference just in our pure numbers between those guys. And then where is the where is there a difference, though, when we look at the top five, Bama, Georgia, Clemson, Notre Dame, and Ohio State? Is there a gap at all in this group, or are they close together? Well, I think this is where, you know, Notre Dame's going to probably regret having started Winbush early in the season because now that they have Book in there, he's, you know, I think elevated the prospects of that team substantially. Them being at four, their, their ELO rating or their power ranking is a lot different than the Alabamas, the Georgias, and the Clemsons. And, you know, for good reason, right? They've had the top three defenses in college football so far. But that's where, like, I think the huge gap is. Ohio State's further down than Notre Dame, but, you know, they're probably in the same equivalence class. Last week on this channel, I debated with Mike Renner, who is the number two team in the country? Because just from a pure record standpoint, you've got Ohio State there, you have Notre Dame, you have Georgia, you have Clemson. For us, is it a clear Georgia at number two, or is it is it pretty close now? No, I, th I think it's pretty close. You know, um, you know, the quarterback position for Clemson's kind of, I think more of a question mark than it is for Georgia. Played well this week, played poorly against Syracuse the week before. So to me, I think I need to see a little bit more. Um, and for Georgia, they you know they seem to you know they played a little bit down to Missouri, but over the course of, of the season, they've kind of taken care uh, of their work every week. So until they don't, it's going to be uh, difficult to to knock them off the two. People have questioned Georgia because of some of their scores, because the Missouri score was kind of close. Our grades are telling the opposite yeah. story. We've ranked them as the number one offensive line in the entire nation. Again, on the YouTube channel, you can check out the full ranking. We like the playmakers on offense. Yeah. We like the playmakers on defense. Don't be fooled by the score. Georgia, I agree. They are the number two team in the country. So there you have it. It's the PFF College Top 25 after six weeks of college football action. Don't forget to get to EckridgeFootball.com. Check out this list of games. You can be a part of their million dollar challenge. Everybody's eligible to enter the national championship. So go put your name in. It's over at EckridgeFootball.com.